Okay guys, we're gonna bring you one of those talking head videos I haven't done in a while, and this one's not even like quote unquote tech related. It's also raining really bad today, probably because there's just, uh, it's been, this is a sad day for our industry, and by industry I mean tech, and specifically tech on YouTube. So I'm not monetizing this video, I'm not playing ads, it's not sponsored, I'm not doing any editing to this, so just minimize and just listen. Um, we got some stuff to talk about. So you guys may remember late last year, towards the end of last year, The Verge put out a how to build a PC video that was dangerous at best. And what I mean by that, and I, and I didn't make any video content on this, I kind of poked some fun on Twitter. There was like this whole just pile on effect that was happening and, and Stefan, the guy who did the video, I think it was the name Stefan, was just uh, getting attacked from every angle. And I, and I, don't, uh, I don't like that, if you will. And I, I jumped on and made fun of his thermal paste and the tweezers comment and all that sort of stuff. And if you haven't seen the video, it's easy to find. Just look up Verge, how to build a PC. It's been re-uploaded a million times. Bunch of, bunch of people doing parodies and a lot of critiques because the problem with that particular how-to guide was it was dangerous in the sense that there were things being explained incorrectly. Incorrectly enough, and so egregiously poor, I think that's the right word, I'm trying to sound smart here, you could damage your stuff by following their tutorial, literally. The damage could occur. So a lot of people got very vocal about how bad it was, and The Verge pulled down the video. They left the written article up, but they pulled down the video. Kind of went from there, I guess. Uh, it just sort of started to die down. Months went by. There's still, there still jokes flying around. I mean, people don't forget, right? Things happen. People make jokes. Um, there's always just that lingering effect. And the right way to handle that would have been just kind of let it die down. Just take it offline. You did what you did. Let it die down. One of the most popular videos that was put up regarding parroting or doing a parody based on that build was Kyle or Bitwit. His alter ego, Lyle, uh, doing a kind of a critique of that video. Hilarious. If you haven't seen it, absolutely hilarious. The problem is it got issued a takedown notice from Vox Media, which is the parent company that owns The Verge. Now, The Verge, if you guys don't know, probably lost a lot of credibility leading up to this point. They are definitely a spam site. What I mean by that is their entire goal is to just put out as many articles as they possibly can with as many sponsored banners and sponsored clicks as they can to make their income. There was already some history there with regarding The Verge and some of their editors in that it's written media versus new media. See, video content like this, like we create, like I create, Paul, Kyle, Linus even, we are considered new media. Traditional media would be like written media, newspaper, online articles like Fox News, stuff like that, regular TV. That would be considered old media. And there's always been this kind of a rift because all eyes have really turned to influencers, which I hate that term, by the way. I absolutely hate that term. I'm not, in, I'm not here to influence you to do anything. I'm just here to share information and let you make up your own opinion. Yes, that's basically influence if I'm not smart with or, or responsible with that level of influence that can happen on the market. But that's a whole different discussion. The problem is they have this just distaste for new media because it took views and clicks away from their traditional sites. Rather than kind of adapting to the evolving landscape, which a lot of us grew in, they sort of kind of just started attacking and just making snide comments and stuff like that. Like I believe there was even a comment once, I don't even remember whose name it was, it wasn't important to remember that person's name, something along the lines of like, don't forget tech YouTubers aren't journalists. Well, I'll be honest, I've never been more um, pleased and just more ecstatic about that because I'm not trying to be a journalist because a lot of journalists have alter ulterior motives, they have political alignment, and that's not what I'm about here. So I took that as a compliment, greatest compliment you could give me. I'm not a journalist, thank you. Unfortunately, the other day, Kyle received a copyright strike and a takedown notice on the video. So the video was automatically taken down, which leads us to kind of a couple of problems with this. YouTube has very little mechanism to validate a claim or a strike. There are two, they're very two different, they're two different things. I've had plenty of claims on my channel because of music that was used and then the library I got it from, which I had licensed to use, no longer was licensed to use that song, so it moved to another publisher and then the publisher has, you know, the AI which goes in there and finds the song and then issues a claim and redirects the revenue to them. Usually that's really old videos, I don't even care to fight it because it's so old, they don't get views anymore, it doesn't really matter. Um, a claim doesn't hurt you. It doesn't remove any of the features from your channel. It doesn't affect your standing, uh, your copyright standing with the channel. Because remember, YouTube is terrified of copyright and they pass all of the liability on to the creator as you should. The problem is when someone like Vox Media goes in there and says, hey, this video is a violation. It's copying our content. 
then you can issue, you can, you can determine how you want to handle that. So the claimant or the person filing the claim has to determine, do I want to claim it or do I want to strike it? Do I want it taken down? What do I want to happen? Well, they went after Kyle with a strike. Now the problem with YouTube and a strike is that's a serious offense. It's like three strikes and you're out. Back in the day, it used to be three strikes and your channel was closed entirely, gone forever. But the problem with copyright strikes is the fact that, that basically is a legal claim. They are, you, they are legally claiming they want punishment to you because of the fact that you have copyrighted uh, material that belongs to them, intellectual property, whatever, that you are monetizing and yada, yada, yada. And it's designed to protect you. The DMCA, if you haven't looked up the DMCA, go and look it up. It's one of the most abused mechanisms of our modern age because people have used it to basically say, I don't like what that person said about my product. And by the way, free speech, blah, 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 it exists on the internet, even if you're outside of the US borders. There is a freedom of speech. And as long as you're not slandering or liable, liable saying things that aren't true, writing things that aren't true, then you, can, you are free to do as you wish. The problem is people have abused DMCA because they just don't like what you said. Now, Kyle was under fair use. Fair use basically says you can use content that has been created online. Like in this case, he basically watched and reacted to that video, made commentary, paused it, made commentary, whatever, which falls completely under fair use. I learned that as a claimant myself because I had people uploading some of my videos, making commentary and stuff, and I looked into the legal action, I talked to my MCN, we talked to the lawyers, and found that I would have no legal standing to file a strike. Now, because I go through an MCM, I, I had that, which stands for multi-channel network, by the way, I had at least the legal counsel be able to determine what I could and couldn't do, because if I made an in, in a claim or a strike that was false, then that comes back on me. I don't, I don't want that to happen. The problem is with YouTube, you can do that and there's no repercussion. You can just throw them out there and whatever sticks, sticks, and then there's no repercussion if you abuse that system. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is this was a false strike, has no basis because it's used under fair use. In fact, h 3 h Productions went to court and fought this in court and won. So there's already a, a trial that can be cited in terms of this being abuse of D, uh, DMCA. So where does that leave us now? Well, Kyle, unfortunately, while this is being handled, cannot live stream. That's, a, that's one of the first features that's removed. He's no longer going to be a recommended channel because of the fact that YouTube now looks at him as a liability because of this strike. Mind you, no one has reviewed this strike. Nobody has gone in and checked the validity of this strike. And if they had, then obviously the strike would have never been issued. Now, if you receive three strikes in a three month period, they can close your channel indefinitely. And this strike won't be automatically removed for three months, which really sucks because Kyle's having to fight this now and spend time and energy and resources in doing this, which in the meantime is going to be affecting his day-to-day -day operation because features that would be normally available to him are not available. So I'm making this video to make you guys aware. The Verge is a tech website. It is a site that is supposed to reside in the same space that we reside and basically coexist harmoniously. Harmoniously? Har with harmony? Whatever. We're supposed to coexist and lift each other up. That's why you see positive stuff going around between Steve and I and Linus and I and Paul and Kyle. We lift all, the rising sea lifts all ships. There's no reason for anyone to be putting down anyone, yada, 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 or fighting each other because nobody wins in that situation. That's why you don't see me participate in Twitter drama. You don't, well, okay, plenty of Twitter drama. You don't see me get involved with other people and like start fighting them and stuff, other creators. That's, that's not what I do. It's not what you're gonna see me do. That's why I don't get in arguments with other YouTubers and stuff and make you know videos about drama videos and this and that. And he said this, and that, that's stupid. So this should have never happened to begin with. So at the end of the day, what we have here is somebody in our community who's highly respected and has worked very hard to get to where he is, having his bottom line completely impacted by a frivolous strike on his channel that YouTube has no protections against. The problem is YouTube is so damn afraid of the repercussions of potentially Google getting in trouble with copyrighted material that they just immediately pass the strike onto the end user, in this case being Kyle, and then it's up to him to fight to get it corrected. That whole innocent until proven guilty does not exist on YouTube, something that many creators, h 3 h Productions, really leading that charge, that this needs to be, there needs to be review, like an actual manual review of every strike before it's issued. The problem is that requires manpower. And we, as we already know, YouTube doesn't even like to give us the features that we want or features that work half the time. How are they gonna put the manpower into this to make sure that creators like myself are not impacted by people who can simply go and click a few buttons? 
Now there should be repercussions on this. And let me tell you why. If you are sued by someone and you don't believe that you are responsible for the suit, you can countersue. You can countersue for the time and the money and the legal and all of that invested in defending yourself. So why doesn't that exist on YouTube? If somebody's abusing DMCA for takedown notices, why is it up to us to have to prove that we are in the right and then the person that does the claim gets off scot-free with no repercussions whatsoever? It's an extremely one-sided system. I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said a million times already through all the people leading the charge, like Boogie2988, Dave DeFranco, lots of people who've talked about this. YouTube has uh, it's fallen on deaf ears. They don't care. So that's why us as the community have to stick together, and that's why I'm making this video, to make you aware of what's going on and to make you aware of somebody that ex exists in our space is uh, abusing their, their power, or actually no power. There's no power there. They're abusing power that doesn't exist, and that's the problem with this. So you guys respond however you want. You guys can say whatever you want. I mean, I'm not, the comments on this video don't really matter to me. This was just more of an, making you guys aware. This would have been gone already. We were forgetting about that. It had been taken care of. It wasn't online. People weren't breaking their computers with the exception of their written article, but let's face it, nobody was reading The Verge anyway. It's back in the spotlight in another negative slant because I guess The Verge looks at it this way. Bad press is better than no press. Well, at least this way, you know what their, their true colors are. So anyway, I'm gonna go guys. Thanks for watching this video. I just wanted to make you aware of what was going on and the fact that this could happen to any of your favorite creators. So stand by them. Give them the support that they need, whether it be me, Kyle, Paul, whoever, whatever channel, whatever genre you like to watch. Like, favorite, subscribe, all that stuff. The interactions definitely help and it can counteract some of the uh, negative that comes from these claims and these strikes and stuff like that. At least keeps the algorithm fed and it keeps your content creator motivated to make content even when you're having to deal with this kind of crap on practically a daily basis. All right, guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Sign off in the comments on how you feel about this situation and how you think YouTube should handle this. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.